Welcome to the Wild Physio Podcast with your host, Andrew Wild. Today, I have Cameron Heiss and Liv Streeline on. Now, Cam was a fellow that started following me probably about 18 months ago, and he got right into the Hybrid Therapist Podcast, which I hosted with Andrew Elioth. And we actually had Cam on as a guest, I think it was about October last year, maybe, was it, Cam? Yeah, yeah about then. And then you obviously came over to Sydney for our Christmas party and we got on the booze and had a few drinks down at Manly and had a few vodkas with your Gucci handbag, which is great. Um, and just for some context for the listeners, Cam is the principal physiotherapist at Trained Physio and Fitness over in East Perth. Um, he has a Bachelor of Exercise Sports Science with a major in Human Performance, Bachelor of Physiotherapy. He played Oz Rules back in the day before he had too many injuries and had to quit. And he's a bodybuilder as well. And we've got Liv. So Liv is a new grad physiotherapist. She started working with Cam at Trained Physio and Fitness last year in November. And she's got a Bachelor of Physiotherapy with an Honours. She started working last year in November, as I said, and she has a Bachelor of Exercise and Sports Science. She's a personal trainer with a Cert 3 and 4. She's a powerlifter and she's also a bikini competitor. So welcome to Cam and Liv. Thank you for having us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, you're, you're, hosting, you're hosting now, eh? Hey? What was that? Didn't you know I'm actually running the show today? Yeah, well, why don't we do that? It's the trained... Physio and Fitness Podcast. You guys can interview me. <laughs> now, before we dive too much into life as a new grad live, why did you choose physio? Um, growing up, I played a lot of sport and mainly netball. I got into kind of state league level, but I had a repeated injury where I dislocated my patella twice and then ended up having surgery on it. So I had a triple T and a lateral release. And this is when I was about 16. Um, and from that experience, I didn't have the greatest physio experience in regards to there was no exercise prescription. There was no, like the communication wasn't the greatest in regards to what I had to do and how hard I needed to push the rehab from my um point of view so it got to the point where I then really struggled to get back my range of motion and actually lost the neural like connection to be able to lift my leg or anything like that and then I'd go back to physio and they'd be like oh why can't you bend your leg and it was like well you told me not to move it so I wasn't moving this thing um, and at that point I had no idea really about exercise rehab and things like that I actually had a really good um, personal trainer that I worked with to get me back to state league and it gave me an appreciation of um, exercise rehab and strength and conditioning and all that kind of um, that side of the rehab so I guess also developing a few like mental health kind of concerns uh, with this identity crisis I had I guess when I couldn't play netball um, and none of that was kind of taken care of so then when I kind of had the opportunity of what profession I was going to go into, I just wanted a way that I could help. It was mainly that I could help someone that was in my exact situation to never go through that, um, to never have the kind of struggle in the rehab, either getting to the point where they never have the injury or making sure that they have the best rehab um, coming out of it. Um, and, yeah, so not doing physio with the double degree of sports science and getting into it through that sounds great and it's very similar to i think cam and i are both similar to the fact that we played a lot of sport and we got into physio because we were injured all the time we're always at the physio as well so i think that's a really common theme with physios especially ones that get into the stuff that you you know the three of us are doing is we're often the ones that we injured as adolescents and then we've seen what what things, what things are done well in the physio profession and what things are done poorly. And then it kind of drives you to potentially, as you said, you just want to help people that are in a similar situation than you were when you were 16. Now, your experience as a new grad, Liv, I remember my first ever day as a physio and I was shitting myself. Um, how was your first day at trained physio and fitness? Was Cam scary? Yes, no. <laughs> It was scary. 
Um, no, I guess I kind of had a good, a really good introduction in regards to, I actually signed on with Train and Linda and Cam before my official qualifications came through. So I did a bit of like a prep phase where I was able to shadow Cam and a few of his um, sessions and learn a lot of the um, logistics and business side from Linda. So I guess the first day wasn't as scary. Um, it definitely helped me out soon. But as soon as Cam asked me, like, I think he asked me to do, like, a quad release, I think, a quad massage to any client. I was like, oh, my God, like, do I know how to massage? But after that, it was, it was okay. <laughs> and did, were you seeing clients your first day? Yes, yeah. So straight into it? Yeah, so straight away I had a few booked in, yeah, yeah. And, and how, what was the, the protocol like with new clients versus existing clients and how long you would have with each client? Um, so straight away it was one hour initial consults and then half hour or an hour follow-ups. Um, it wasn't until I, there was never a push until I was comfortable to take on um, half hour initial consults. Um, so yeah, that, and that's just, that's with new or existing clients. So it was up to your discretion rather than Cam's? Yeah. <laughs> it's well, kind of like when you're, when you're ready and you feel comfortable that you can do it initially in half an hour, then feel free to book it. But otherwise, um, like, I mean, Cam's really big on the full yeah. hour initially. And right? Initially, I'm, I'm really big on trying to push for the, the full hour initial. It just, I guess as a new grad, you're going to think a little bit more. You want to ask a few more questions. It gives you a chance to settle, not be nervous for those reasons. But even now, myself, I went through a clinic, um, a more commercial one, and I used to do 30-minute consults for initials. I've gone back to one hour just because I believe I can give so much more value for a new client coming in. And I want to, I believe in the, the physio profession or the way we're trying to go about it, that there's so much to offer. So at least after the first session, they're working, walking away with um, education um, and assessment and some exercises and they, they know where their pathway is headed, whether it's uh, off for a scan specialist or they're going to continue on the rehab plan with me. So we yeah, do I, try to push for the hour. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Like my initials are 45 minutes and some are an hour. Um, but yeah, I've, in the past, before I had my own business, I was pushed to do, you know, half an hour initials and there's just not enough time, especially if the person's, you know, a few minutes late and then you're back to back to back for another few hours after that. You know, it's hard to fit in a lot of stuff within that 25 minute consult by the time, you know, explain, you know, do the pleasantries and all that jazz and they fill out a few forms and all that. So no, I completely agree. And Cam, what was your experience like when you started as a physio um, as a new grad physio, was it similar to what you were describing then as in starting yeah. an hour? Yep. Yeah, it was. It was very similar. Um, the owner of the clinic um, made he, me basically shadow him for a couple of weeks. Um, so I thought, you know, um, from what he's built, which is quite impressive, um, even though we've taken a different philosophy and a different mindset to physio, um, I thought, why well, reinvent the wheel when it worked? I thought it worked for me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but the only difference was, I think, the half an hour initials when I started versus the hour. Um, I was getting instructions. I wanted to work full-time from the start. He was like, we've got part-time availability three days a week. Get yourself busy. Then you can go to full-time. And did that within a few, few weeks. And then before you know it, I was sort of doing five, six, and then seven days a week. Um, initially and I, I had a big belief in what he sort of believed in was get yourself dirty um, in the trenches see as many clients as you can um, because real life experience um, is a little different to just the textbooks so and the more people you see the more experience you get then you can go back and reflect and then when you're doing uh, personal development it makes more sense you actually start to go oh yeah I understand that now or this is I'm going to try and apply it for the next three months versus spending so much time with theory all the time, so. Yeah, I completely agree. And even that transition from going to uni and it's so much theory and obviously you're doing your practical and you're doing your placements and stuff towards the end of your university career, I suppose you put it. But how did you find it live once you went into practice as a new grad in terms of the communication side of things? Because communication is so big. Like that's all we do every day is we just talk to clients and we obviously calm them down and help them with so many things and 
so much of it is communication. How did you deal with that in the first few months? Um, it was definitely a transition, like from what you learn at uni and how formal you have to be and very, uh, just like, I mean, to get a good grade in a practice zone, you've got to ask every single question possible. You've got to explain it very technical, but then you've also got marks for being able to put it in lay terms. So it's, it's very hard to, um, and obviously talking to someone who doesn't actually have the condition because you do go through a prac model. So it's very hard to learn to um, apply it specifically to their situation and their health literacy, their life experience, all that kind of stuff. But I guess it helped that I'd worked during uni, I worked as a personal trainer. Um, so I'd had a bit of experience of diet, um, dealing with clients one-on-one. -on -one. I'd done a bit of like group train instruction, um, instructing as well. So I had that kind of element of a little bit of experience with communicating with a client and being able to adjust my communication style to who I was dealing with. Um, but it's still, I don't, it's still definitely saying like you've got to work on like you said, it's the most kind of important thing um, to make sure that the client actually understands what's going on, they're comfortable and know the treatment going forward and that's how you're going to get their best results. So. Yeah, and I, I think... Yeah, just you, what was um, that? Yeah, Liv, she's only, she's only 23, 24, but she's probably got the maturity of a 30 plus year old. So <laughs> that definitely helps with the communication. Um, I think that's an issue when you see when an older physio, uh, sorry, patient comes in and he's in his 40s or 50s and sees the age of a, a new grad when they come to collect and you get this little squeaky voice and they're like, what does this bloke know? He he's, looks 20. Um, whereas Olivia is quite tall. She was lean and muscular, so that, that helped from all her training. So all this shit, she knows how, you know, she's been in the gym. But then the maturity once you got talking and then obviously having a time in the consult, I think that's played a huge role. Um, so hats off to her or her parents, basically. <laughs> and I, I think the other thing about it is once you come out of uni, it's often hard to be yourself in a, in a consult because you're so worried about so many things and your personality doesn't come out as much, I feel, early on because you, you're trying to not fuck up pretty much. <laughs> you know, you're trying to think about the diagnosis and the client and trying to come up with obviously the treatment ideas and all that sort of stuff. And you've got so many things going on in your head that it's hard to be yourself and personality is so important in what we do. Did you find that tricky to try and let your personality shine through during a consult when you just got so many things going through your head, Liv? Yeah, definitely. I think because at first you're not sure about, and I was listening to one with your hybrid podcast about the professionalism, like, at first you feel like you've got to be very, very technical and you've got to impress them and they're just going to want it. Like they're judging you on kind of how many big words you can use and all that kind of stuff. But I think we've got such a special profession where it can be a really, really good balance between being a professional and then also being someone who's like, cause you're dealing with someone's whole life like either their injuries affecting the way they can work or the way they can do their hobbies or their interests and everything like that. So you become like an integral part of their life and how they're going like to, they, you really kind of become the center of that focus. So being able to relate to the person and embed yourself in their life is really important as well. And like developing that rapport and that kind of personal relationship. And I feel like that's the only way that you can kind of be honest with each other. Um, so it was definitely hard at first. At first I was kind of like trying to keep it very separate, very professional, but, and now I'm just like, I'm just laughing. She's, the whole just, time. she's just a larrikin in the gym, so. <laughs> but but that's, that's, so, that's so good. You have to, you have to have that. <laughs> like, Humor is so important in a consult. And I think having that type of personality, like you need to be outgoing as a few, you don't have to be outgoing, but it definitely helps if you're outgoing as a physio. And having that sense of humour is so important as well. And it, I think that unis get it wrong in that regard. The fact that they try and create more of a rigid practitioner, don't you think? Like, you know, even the notion of you were told in prac exams and stuff to walk into the room and like shake someone's hand or whatever and say, oh, yeah. hi, oh, my, yeah. name's, my name's Andrew and I'll be your therapist today. I'm just like, who the fuck says that? 
No one says that. Yeah. Like, I would never yeah. say that. I would take great, great care of you or yeah. something. Yeah, and then like, hi, my name's Olivia. I'm a third year physiotherapy student. I'll be helping you today. <laughs> yeah, it's just so rigid and it's just <laughs> unnecessary. Like, I, I think it, it definitely took me a little bit of time when I was a new grad to kind of just get get confident enough to be myself. And now I definitely am. Like, my personality just shines through and I just am who I am. Um, and it's great that it sounds like you're already to that point where, you know, you're just going in and letting your personality shine through rather than being crazy rigid like university teaches you. I think it's helped as I've started to get um, people specifically coming to see me. So yeah. that's given me like a lot of confidence in not only like my ability, but people wanting to um, see me and like what I can offer in terms of my experience and like what I've done with whether it be powerlifting or like the bodybuilding and that side of things. Like people want to see that. So that's, it's given me even more confidence to kind of actually utilize or show that side of me. Yeah, for sure. And you yourself, you're a brand within the brand, you know, people come and see you for you for the experience you've got, or, you know, the word of mouth referral. So hundred percent, I completely agree with that. Now Liv, um, obviously you've got Cam as a mentor, but do you have any other mentors around you that you've really sort of lent on in the last nine months? Um, in regards to like just physio, Physio, strength and conditioning, um, just your, I, I suppose not only just physio and strength and conditioning, but just work and life, a anything, anyone that you use regularly as a mentor, obviously your parents would be part of that, but anyone else? Oh, I mean, definitely Linda and Cam, like, it being <laughs> my first, like, first job and straight out of uni and them taking the bet on because they hired me like before I fully um, graduated. So taking that kind of bet and then- I hired her in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going for a 30 well. minute like half speed, an hour and a half later, like here's the job. I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, no, definitely like, I mean, Cam's renowned as one of her like, best physios. So who else am I going to learn from kind of thing. and. The way Linda runs um, trained is definitely given me a lot in regards to how I run myself, not only as a physio, but as like my own little business. Um, even though like, I'm an employer, so we like market myself and everything like that. Um, I've definitely learned a lot from like this. Like, I listen to your podcast. Um, I mean, I was lucky enough that we had Andrew lock in for a private um pd like early on um which kind of was really good and he kind of it was actually really good to learn one thing he said early was don't just go through your big battery of tests just what is the patient actually presenting with and why don't you do tests that confirm that rather than rule out everything else so that was very early on to take that kind of point of view was like i think i saved me a lot of time and just like stress um and then i've just got like really good friends and family that support me um so balancing work and life and everything like that sounds great and yeah you need those people around you for sure and cam you being the mentor of lives what have you done to help her out <laughs> and how challenging has it been what issues have you had? Oh, oh, yeah, no. just, let her, just let her wings go and that was it really. Um, to be honest. <laughs> no, nah, just along the way, I think the banter in the gym and just letting it know that she can relax, I think, in the gym that um, I think people almost operate the best when they're in flow and feeling good. Um, whereas when I think it's too serious sometimes, um, we've also probably set some challenges with catch-ups when we've had reviews and seen how, you know, pat her on the back for all the good things she's done, which she's been killing it from when she first started, um, let's be honest. Um, but then I know that she's um, a similar way to myself where she's a bit of a perfectionist and she's a high achiever and um, there's more than just, she wouldn't be just satisfied with being a even just now, we've got, think, I've got things in my head to 
make her challenge more and to keep continuing her to grow. So whether it's life things or physio, but um, I think if you're constantly setting little goals, um, then it, it sets you in a, on a track for that three months or six months rather than just you start to go through the motions. Because I've had that in my own life where I've gone through the motions where at times I've been left to my own devices for a couple of years and you can get into that cruise mode, especially if you're, you're still busy as a physio and you're still getting clients coming through. Um, but I think you need to get challenged. Like one of the things, like getting on here last time, that was a huge challenge for me. That was a massive challenge. I'm, I'm, I don't like public speaking. Uh, you know, I'm not that great at it and I need to improve in it. Um, but I feel a lot better second time around um, doing it. So, yeah. Um, from a strength and conditioning point of view, her background, she's already got all that knowledge. So... Um, I haven't had to go, I've had to spend more time with other new grads in terms of strength conditioning and rehab. Um, so, so yeah, it's been more, I guess, um, more so guidance and, and, and the challenges rather than specifics, to be honest. Yeah. You definitely sure, I guess. Sorry, you go. I was going to say, you definitely seem more comfortable this podcast. Um, <laughs> do you have, do you have regular, uh, do you have regular in services you do? Like, do you do a weekly in service with, uh, your employees and especially the new grads? Yeah. So we used to do, um, fortnightly. Um, however, during the COVID period and everything got put on the back burner. And then in recent times we've started to re increase that again with and then we're going to have uh, more pds like actual people come out to give and rather than just hearing me talk all the time i think it's important to to get other professionals um that are more experienced more smarter than myself who um come from different fields we had a doctor out previously who used to be a physio who was mine um and then we're looking to get um either andrew lock again out once he eventually can come otherwise yeah i think it's important also to not just have the owner of the clinic doing all the talking completely um, agree and yeah and with pds i think it's what i've found recently if i just do it myself it's you new grads won't be as actively involved so um we've got something coming up for Liv which she doesn't know about soon so yeah oh god <laughs> When the uh, when the borders are back open, fly me over, eh? Oh, 100%. Definitely. 100%. <laughs> um, now, Liv, how do you learn? What do you use outside of obviously using Cam as a mentor and seeing clients to learn further in terms of physio, strength and conditioning? Do you use courses, books, podcasts, blah? What do you, what do you use? Um, courses, definitely. I haven't done actually many since graduating mainly because of um, COVID and I was just trying to like get my feet and then was going to, was the plan to do a few more courses, but um, podcasts definitely, I thought that's a really accessible way and probably more up to date than some books, I guess, because the books obviously take longer to update. There's always the foundation knowledge there, but definitely um, podcasts. I mean, the right people on Instagram sharing the right, content um and i've actually been lucky enough to work with uh learning a little bit through fit right physiotherapy um who's a perth-based like kind of specialize in women's health so getting a little bit of a taste for that yeah great and outside of cam in clinic do you feed off the other physios a fair bit as well and kind of discuss each other's clients a fair bit just to kind of i suppose broaden your horizons Sorry, was that, oh, sorry, was that <laughs> well, no, no, it was for it was actually for Liv. It was effectively just. Oh, you know, okay. Do, so, do, yeah, do, we'll do you go? Do you go? That must have cut out. Do you go off and do you discuss? You know, your clients with the other physios within clinic, not just Cam, to try and sort of spread yeah. the the knowledge between you all. Yeah, in our in actually in our last few kind of new grad um, PDs with Cam and the other new grads that are here, um, we have yeah been bringing up kind of like a complex case or a case that you've had that was either interesting challenging or um of that like um which has been good um to kind of see the perspective and then you can always get a bit of feedback on what you did what you could do next time um and the progressions 
Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think a lot of physio new grads get sucked into doing heaps and heaps of different courses, you know, and a lot of the, I think there's so many courses out there and there's so many courses that are complete bullshit in my opinion that you just don't need to do. Um, what courses do you think yep. this is for you, Cam? Um, what courses do you think are important and what are the ones that you would push a new grad such as Liv to go and do? Yeah, so probably dry needling. Um, I think just because it's it's something that can be used quite quickly within a five, 10 minute, minute consult adjunct to all your strength and conditioning principles. Um, people like it, want it. So I think that's another reason that well, you know, it, it is scientifically proven as well. Um, I think there is enough literature that I've read that it works. Um, and even if it does the placebo on that as well, I, I'm big on that, whether it's rock tape, um, et cetera. So yeah, definitely dry needling. Um, I would always be trying to further progress, progress knowledge of strength and conditioning even more. Um, so, so yeah, that would be the initial period. In that 12 months, if it didn't have, it, in Liv's case, it's a little different because she already had the strength conditioning knowledge. For other people, they're either doing S&C &S with me every two weeks or they'll be pushed to do some sort of course that's specific in strength rehab. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then for someone like Liv, it's also I'll be getting someone out every two to three months that I think is of interest, whether it's to, to analyse the shoulder or to do spinal. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So it might be a, not necessarily, I guess, under the APA, but it might be a experienced physio doctor that, that will come out to do a lecture, seminar, prep work. Um, yeah, there's enough on the APA where there's numerous, I do a lot online as well, rather than having to go out in person. I think that's a little old school now. If you can get your hands on doing your online APA, um, CPD work. I think that's the other the other thing as well, and then for her, we've uh, Linda organised some women's health um, content as well. Yeah, great, great. And <clears throat> I've said this multiple times on my Instagram, and I say to a lot of new grads that sort of reach out to me, I say that every moment that you're exercising or you're in the gym, you could effectively think about that as work or PD in itself. And Liv, this is for you. How important has your journey been since obviously being a netballer and then having that injury and now being a, a bikini competitor and a powerlifter? How, how important has that experience been in the gym for you as a clinician now, um, nine months into your career? I think massively. Um, so yeah, coming from sport and then towards the kind of end of my netball I guess, career or whatever, lack of, um, <laughs> started to do gym type it was only towards the end really that gym um training started to come into it to um as an adjunct to like our netball training um but then yeah being in the gym since i was 16 uh has i've learned so much like i've learned with so many different people i mean when i first had the injury i, I developed like anorexia and i was down to about 46 kilos so i had no muscle mass um and so I built that all from scratch. So, and now I have like 55 kilos of lean muscle. So it's literally from scratch. I've learned how to do it all. I've done everything from um, functional training to um, bodybuilding to yeah, powerlifting, strongman, all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely given me, um, and I've done lot, lot, numerous courses along the way, and it's definitely given me an appreciation and an ability to be um, flexible and actually understand like what the client's coming. I'm not just pigeonholed in, I'm a, I know how to powerlift too bad if you're a crossfitter, I, this is what I want you to do, or this is how I do it. Like I've got an appreciation and awareness of a lot of different um, sports and like sport requirements and just training in general. So I think it's definitely helped with even just picking up on different ways to cue for different people. Like not everything sticks to one person like knees out or shoulders back doesn't work for every client. So being able to adjust that um, and have the experience of, okay, this exercise doesn't work. Let's do this exercise or um, yeah, I think, I, I think just everyone, every physio should have a gym experience of some sort. <laughs> oh yeah, I completely agree. And you need, you need the time in the trenches as Cam said to figure that out as well. 
time in the trenches yeah. in the gym, but time in the trenches seeing people move and seeing how they present and how they explain things to to you. It's just so important that hands on hands on and face to face time with clients is is gold. Um, now this is a question for both of you. Um, Cam, what's your favourite lift? And Liv, what's your favourite lift? If you only had to do one lift for the rest of your life, what would it be? Shit, that's a tough one. Ooh. For me, it's probably deadlift. How do you deadlift? Conventional, sumo? Conventional. Conventional? You're really tall. Do you like a trap bar? I love a trap bar. Yeah, I don't mind a good trap bar. How tall yeah. are you? 176. It's pretty tall. Cam? <laughs> Yeah, I'd have to say probably, I was going to say bicep curls, but no, I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, I'll, I'll say squat. Yeah, good call, good uh, call. It's, yeah, it's just, yeah, but yeah, it was either deadlift or squat, so I'll lean towards the squat. Yeah, fair call, fair call. Um, now, one more question. The merging of strength and conditioning and physiotherapy, obviously the three of us all do it. This is more of a message from you two to the new grads out there. Why is it so important that we merge both those fields and we become more of the hybrid model that I carry on about? Um, yeah, so my thoughts, are, I think, I think I've been through the both models myself as a patient, um, seen other patients go through your passive approach, um, pharmaceutical plus massage, that sort of model. Um, and it hasn't worked and, and the chiro, I mean, there's good chiros out there as well, but your traditional old school chiro, I've seen it uh, hands on not work for clients and patients that have either come to me, family members, friends. Um, then I've experienced it myself. Not to say that hands on work is not appropriate. It definitely has its place, but it has its place, I guess, in a high-end athlete who knows how to move and can be then given extra specific exercises that can help them rehab. And they're highly motivated people, but that's not even 10%. That's 0.1% of the population, I believe, because even the highest-end athletes that are getting paid good money, they're babied and held their hand. We don't, we don't get to see them, that top end. We've got highly motivated clients, but then even then we may have to hold their hand for four months 12 months in that first phase so they, they're doing it second nature, I believe. So um, then I've seen the Pilates model, uh, nothing to, to completely, um, but it's just, there's only so far I believe that can take you. It makes you move, which is better than, um, I guess, not moving at all if a person was only going in for hands-on therapy. But I think there's a better model than the Pilates model. I think um, it, it's, it's gonna be, it's got to be more challenging. It's got to actually create enough load to change a structure, to change a tissue, to change bone um, versus laying um, on a reformer doing dead bugs. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm super passionate about strength and conditioning and it plays a huge role in the model of physio. I, I Even with long-term clients I've seen for 10 years who only want to massage once or twice a week, I force them into the gym for at least 10 minutes. Let me take you into the gym. I just want to show you a new exercise that's come out. It may have not even been a new exercise, but <laughs> it's for me to get in the gym. So, so yeah, I think, um, yeah. Liv? I think, yeah, it's, it's vital in order to actually make change in the client's life. Like, not everyone has to be a world-breaking, um, to have a deadlift record, but everyone's going to pick up a 30-kilo box or pick up their 30 kilo child or... That's a heavy so, child. That's a heavy child. It's not like eight years old. <laughs> um, like Ivan so, Drago's love child. <laughs> yeah. okay, no, I'm not talking baby, Jesus. You probably don't even um, know who Ivan Drago is, Liv, do you? No. Oh, Rocky. Rocky <laughs> Four. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> that was so messy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> go on. <laughs> Fucking you guys. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, so there's always, there's always going to be a reason why they need to be able to lift with good form and have that foundation amount of strength, whether it's not. Um, I've had a lot of clients that have been like, they just have back pain and they never, they've never been into the gym 
but then they're going to be yeah picking up equipment or they're going to be in their job they've got to do these daily activities it doesn't mean we need to set up a box and mimic that put some bricks in it but you can do a deadlift teach them actually how to lift how to use their body and it's so empowering for um the client as well so i think if you want to actually change someone's life and fix an injury then it has to be that hybrid approach otherwise it's not going to do anything completely agree amen to that um, thank you so much for both coming on. Uh, Cam, you look very relaxed this time. So well done. Liv, well done as well. Um, well wealth of knowledge. For nine months in, you sound like you've, um, to put it bluntly, you got your shit together. So well done. Um, <laughs> where can we find you both? Instagram, all that sort of stuff. And also oh. train, <laughs> tra train physio, <laughs> fitness, all that stuff. Linda, can you sort this out? <laughs> Instagrams uh, at trained physiopath. Thank you. That's the better half of Cam. <laughs> For the listeners. And Liv, where can we find you? You've got an Instagram. You post a lot of great stuff and a lot of bikini shots. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a mix. <laughs> um, it's liv.streeline.physiotherapy. How do you spell your last name? S-T-R-E-L-E-I-N. Thank you very much. It'll be in the show notes. Uh, this podcast is live on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Any last words, guys? And thanks for having me. Cam? <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. And like, I'm actually holding you to that. So as soon as the borders open, you're coming over. All right. Fly me over yeah. in your private jet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, as usual, stay strong. <laughs>